our contributions in education will be our legacy. Our legacy. Our legacy. Whether it's through live education or maybe through social media, we're always trying to make a personal connection with you, the learner. At Sandia, we believe our smile is our business and our personality is our logo. And how we make people feel after you experience our education and tools is our trade. Join us. Join us. Join us. Join us. Join us, my friends. And be a part of the same Hey, everyone. I'm Kurt Gerheim. Welcome to Transformation Tuesday with Sammy. Well, you know you're looking at this guy. I'm not Sammy, but you're getting to know me now. I'm one of the co-founders of Sam Via, and I'm kind of like Sammy and Andrew's wingman. <laughs> and you consider me that way to, to go about it. Yesterday, we started off this incredible week with uh, Lindsay Olson, and just she wowed the crowd here yesterday, and it's going to keep on going today. It's almost a Redken a red can palooza <laughs> this week in all our programming. Let me tell you what I'm referring to when I say that. Our schedule this week, we started with Lindsay. In just a few moments, you're going to meet Lauren Hagen. She's also one of the great red can educators. You're about to get a treat with her. No, no, uh, Sammy, uh, excuse me, no Andrew today or this week. We're not going to have Andrew at Wellness Wednesdays, but boy, Thursday, if you need your Sammy fix, you're going to be able to do it on Thursday. Red can styling sessions with Sam Via. It's going to, he's going to have other members of the Redken Styling Society with him. And this is going to be a class that gives you styling demos, tips and tricks from elevating ponytails, um, accessorizing styles that your clients are going to love. Um, it's going to be a really good day. It starts at 3 o'clock Eastern time. You can obviously go to the Redken.com channel to uh, watch Sam and his team on Thursday. The Redken storyline continues on over the weekend. Another of the show must go on. This is going to be on Sunday, Monday. Let me spend a moment with you on this. All four of our Red uh, of our Samvia Art team will be participating on the show must go on hair and the chair today. This is going to be a very specific two day event. Four hours on Sunday, four hours on Monday. You know what we're like when we do our shows must go on. This is our fourth one in the last several months, and you're going to see more of the shows must go on. Well, another one on the twentieth and the twenty first. This time, we're going to have some special guests on each of the days. On Sunday, Fumi Iguchi. He is the Lunatic Fringe creative director. And what does that mean? Well, Lunatic Fringe has been a powerhouse in the Naha Awards over the years. They are one of the great session studios there in, in the United States. He's out of Utah. Andrew Carruthers used to be at Lunatic Fringe before he joined us. In fact, he still stayed with Lunatic Fringe when he became our creative director for a short time. So he will be with us on Sunday. And then Hugo Arias, another of the great Redken educators, will be with us on Monday. So, and of course, our team, Sam, Anna Peters, Jesse Linares, Andrew Carruthers. So you get four full hours of education, both on Sunday and on Monday, 11 a.m. Eastern time, 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, both days. Now, when you register, what's important about this, if you do register for this class, and we recommend that you do, you'll have, you have an opportunity to win some shears. So registering, and you'll be in the queue for winning two Samvia shears. I, I, I believe it's the seven inch dry cutting shear and the reversible blending shear that'll be available for both of you. Uh, I mean, for anybody, two shears available for whoever registers. So make sure you register and have a chance to win. So that's the lineup for the week. You can see Redkin all over it, one of the great institutions of education in America. We're full of great educators this week. And who do we have now? Well, we're soon to be, uh, get to enjoy Lauren Hagen. Lauren Hagen is one of the deep, deep lineup of Redkin educators that are gracing us here on our, our programming. She is, I call her a triple threat because she can do everything. She can color, she can design, she can finish. You've probably seen her work in Modern Salon. You've probably seen her work in Style Magazine on JCP Monthly Magazine. She is a, a passionate educator, 
and we're about to meet her today. So let's not waste any more time. May I please introduce Redkin Director of Education and Training for Ulta Beauty. Let's welcome Lauren Hagen. Hey, Lauren. Hey, Kurt, how are you? I'm wonderful, thank you. It's great to see you this morning. Oh my God, is this so incredible. I have goosebumps watching uh, Sam's opening video and then seeing all the comments on the side, like where everyone is joining from this morning. I saw Salt Lake City, I saw Chicago. I mean, such an incredible uh, platform. Uh, there's Pearl from Chicago. It's like so incredible how we can all come together and we feel like we are in one place together. It's incredible. You are, you are so right. Was, you know, you were going global this morning and you're going to have a chance to share your wonderful talents with the world. And 15, 20 nations at times are watching with us. So you're going to have a great time doing so. Lauren, give me a little bit of, if, if you will, I've got some interest in your ultra beauty role that you now have with Redken, but I think the world needs to understand who you are and where you've come from. Well, Kurt, we only have 45 minutes. I need like five to seven business days for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Kurt, you know, I always right say, my, I, I, and thank you for that. Yeah, and I am. I'm seeing all the different countries. Rick from San Diego, he might be at Hoboken Pizza right now. Uh, Kurt, my story is simple. Uh, I grew up in the industry. Anyone on the uh, chat today grow up in the industry? Write industry for me so I can see. I had the privilege of having a mother that was a hairdresser. So I would come home from school every day and I would tell my dad, please bring me to the salon. I want to be with mom. I want to be in the salon. So my dad would bring me to the salon and I spent my childhood in my mom's salon, sweeping the hair, taking rollers out of the lady's hair, you know, just, just having a great time. And it was at that actually young age, it was a very pinnacle moment for me. At nine years old, I realized this is it. This is what I want to do. I want to be a hairdresser. I want to serve. I would watch my mom make people feel so good about themselves. And I was like, that's what I want. So it's what I started doing. I worked in my mom's salon full time, based out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I took over her salon and it was incredible but then I hit a roadblock. If you've ever hit a roadblock in your career, hit roadblock in the chat for me. If you ever came to a place in your career that you hit a roadblock, hit that in for me. So here I am in the salon and I'm realizing I need education. I need to learn how to do hair. I see all these different styles. I, I wanna learn how to do that. And my father said, well, the Redkin just opened an academy in New York City on Fifth Avenue. Let's go and take a class. So I did. I was there the very first year they opened in 1996 when they were located at 46th and 5th Avenue. And I took a class called Design Comprehensive. And Sam Via was one of the facilitators. And when I left that building after those four days, my world was rocked. I learned so many things. I, was, I still realized I had to learn but at the end of my trip, I said, one day, I want to be like one of those people. I want to be an educator and really inspire and motivate and show the industry easy ways to do things, practical ways to do things behind the chair. So and behold, I became a Redkin educator. And for the past two decades, I've traveled the globe as a Redkin artist, global artist, and exchange facilitator. And I truly believe that education is the quintessential element that we have in this industry, in any craft, because if you can truly learn, you can earn and you can live best and you can live better. So I'm very proud to say I've now transitioned into a director role and I am now the Redkin Director of Education and Training for Ulta Beauty, which allows me to still educate and train and take all of the Redkin knowledge bring it to the Ulta Beauty team, which is a great company and an amazing team, and help them grow their skills and knowledge, and knowledge every single day behind the chair. So that's the crux of it in a, in a bite-sized piece. For me, I truly believe that, you know, uh, for me, I walk the walk and talk the talk. And what I mean by that is I do hair. You know, I, I still have a studio where I do hair. And I find it really important that when you teach, you also, you know, you, you buy into what it is that you're sharing. So everything that I bring you guys today, the things that I do behind the chair on a consistent basis 
it save me time and make me money. Write time and money in the chat for me. Time and money in the chat. Thanks, Rick. Because at the end of the day, each and every one of you, you're giving up your time to be here. You could be in the salon. You know, thank you very much, Rick. Congratulations on my new on my new role. You know, each and every one of you could be doing something else in this past hour. You know, you could be in the salon. You could be with your family. But you dedicated your time for education. And education is how we elevate our craft and our skill behind the chair. So I'm just excited to be here. I'm excited to um, share what I'm going to share with you. Our class today is called Express Bob. And what I mean by that is this Bob can literally be done in about 10 minutes. Write 10 minutes for me in the chat. Write 10 minutes for me. Because I don't know about you, but do you feel like our clients and especially, you know, the world that we live in right now, people, you know, people want to get in and they want to get out. If you agree with that, give me a thumbs up or give me a heart emoji. You know, it's important that when our clients are in the chair, we have techniques and skills and, and, and things that we can do in a fast approach, but that work. And that's what I'm here to share with you today. So it's just a little bit of what I, what I have planned for you here. Yeah, 10 minutes, of course. All right. So before we get started, I want you guys to do me a favor. In the chat, I want you to write one thing that you're grateful for today. In the chat, write one thing that you're truly grateful for today. I want to see... I want to see. Um, I want to see what you guys are grateful for. Write it in the chat for me. Oh yeah, I see a lot of heart emojis. I see a lot of thumbs ups. One thing that you're grateful for. Oh, Megan says life. I love that. You woke up this morning. What are you grateful for? I see another life. Stephanie says life. My kids, my children from Lenora. Cindy says life. Kylie being alive. That's awesome. Oh, here we go. Uh, life, a lot of life. Being back at work, Diane. Christy says, my daughter. Gwen, sobriety, congratulations. Uh, Susan, health. Oh, man, that's awesome. I'm grateful for each and every one of you being here today and tuning in to into this platform that Sam and the Sam Via team has created. Um, so awesome and cheers to you guys and cheers for, yeah, free education, my family, my job, you know, all the things sometimes we take for granted. Joni said my job that, um, it's a luxury, right? So, all right. If you guys are ready to kick it off and get started, right? Kick it off in the uh, chat for me, right? Kick it off. If you're ready to get started or just KO to, uh, make it easy for abbreviation. All right, Kurt, they're ready. So before we kind of dive into the shape, I want to talk about some principles of design and some core fundamental things that we need to think about or that I think about every single time I cut hair. So we're going to pull up a slide here. And the first thing that I want to talk to you about is the three elements of shape. So uh, give me a number three in the chat. Give me a number three in the chat. We're going to talk about the three elements of shape. Now, the three elements of shape in a complete haircut is the perimeter, the silhouette, and the texture. So do me a favor and type in P for perimeter, S for silhouette, T for texture. We got perimeter, silhouette, and texture. All right, so let's come live and let's dive in and talk a little bit deeper about what that means. So here's my client, and this is the, the bob we're gonna be showcasing today. I have one side finished curly, and one side finished smooth. So here's why the elements, the three elements of shape are really important for two reasons. Number one, when a client brings me in a picture and they say, oh, I want this haircut. I don't know about you, but I find it sometimes a little intimidating to try and break down and dissect the haircut. If you find that a little intimidating sometimes, say, that's me in the chat. Say, yep, yeah, that's me. Now, the reason that I don't feel intimidated anymore is because I think of my principles of design and I think about my three elements of shape, which are perimeter, silhouette, and texture. So the first thing that I analyze when I look at a picture, or even if someone is just simply sitting in my chair, is I start to analyze the perimeter. Now, the perimeter is the complete outline of the haircut. So it's anything that happens in through the fringe, anything that happens in through the sides, and then of course, anything that's happening in through the back. Now, I don't know about you, but for the longest time, I just always thought perimeter meant the length. In reality, the perimeter is the border of your shape. 
So again, it's the fringe, it's the sides, and then it's the back. So if I have someone bring me in a picture, I'll start to analyze the perimeter. Do they have a fringe? Is it symmetrical or is it asymmetrical? Is it heavy? Is it soft? Same thing in through the sides. Is it an A-line or is it all just symmetrical? And this is what really helps me to drive the consultation because now I can start talking about, okay, great, you brought in this picture. Let's look at the perimeter. Is this what you like? I really think if we went this way with your fringe, that would accentuate your face shape. Now, if we talk about the second element, that's silhouette. So give me an S for silhouette in the chat. Give me an S. All right, awesome. So now when we talk about silhouette, silhouette starts to identify how we've layered the hair. It's what we see the shape starting to take place. So if we go back to that slide for a second, you can take a look at the middle picture. So if you look at the middle picture, that's really showcasing two types of lines that we can create when we cut hair. There's only two lines in the universe. If you know what those two lines are, write it in the chat for me. There's only two lines in the universe. If you know what those lines are, write it in the chat. Let me see. Let me see who's the first one that's gonna dial in here. Come on, who's going for the gold? What are the two lines in the universe? I see a couple S's. Okay, good. So we got straight and curved. Okay, good. Tina says vertical, horizontal. Awesome job. The two lines that in the universe are straight and curved. If you look around anywhere, door frames, hinges, walls, floors, straight and curved lines. So when we layer hair, when we cut hair, we can only ever create two types of shapes. We can create a curved shape or we can create a straight shape. So what I mean by that is when I start to look at a silhouette, if I'm looking at a picture or if I'm looking at my client, I start to ask myself, do I see a curved silhouette or do I see more of a straight silhouette? Now, the reason that's really important is because that will help me identify how I need to layer the hair. It's like cutting hair is like putting a puzzle together. You know, you, you fit in all the pieces to get the overall outcome that you want. So let's dive a little deeper into that. If I want to get a straight line in my silhouette, I need to elevate the hair at a certain degree. If I want to get a curved line in my silhouette, I need to elevate the hair at a certain degree. As long as I know those principles, then I already know the outcome for my haircut before we even do it. And we're gonna dive into that once we start on the shape. All right, now let's talk about that last element of shape and the last element of shape. Who can tell me what it was? We talked about perimeter, we talked about silhouette. What's the last element in, in shape? Let me see it in the chat. The last element, we have perimeter, we have silhouette, shape, very good. What else do we have? The last one begins with a T, I'll give you a clue. It begins with a T. And it ends with an extra. There we go. Mary Jane, texture. Okay, good. So we got texture. Now, texture is when we go in and texturize hair. But here's what I want you to think about when it comes to texturizing. Texturizing should be the refinement or the detail that you put into a haircut. Texture shouldn't be your whole entire haircut. Because if that happens, then it's going to be a little challenging for the client to kind of maybe style their own hair. So again, we have our three elements of shape. perimeter silhouette, and texture. Now, I don't know about you, but when I have a client that comes into the chair, I analyze what area or what element needs addressing. The whole entire haircut doesn't always need to be redone. This is a time saver. So for example, if I have a client that comes in and they say, my, my length is good, I like the movement, but the back is a little heavy. That tells me, I need to go in and re-layer her hair. Maybe I need to go into that silhouette and just freshen up her layers, but not do anything with the perimeter or not do anything with texture. So it's not all or nothing. You know, when we're cutting hair, break down those three elements and see, do I need to cut the perimeter? What kind of perimeter? What kind of outline? What kind of shape am I gonna have? What kind of texture am I gonna add? 
hey, if this has been helpful, helpful, if you learned something just in these few seconds, if, if I gave you some food for thought, give me a thumbs up or give me a yes. If, you, if you're starting to think a little differently about some shoot, we got Mary, she says, yes, give me a yes, give me a thumbs up, whatever device you're on so we can see. Okay, awesome, great job. Thank you guys for your participation. I love this chat. I feel like we're all sitting in a, uh, in a room together, just kind of having a jam session on hair. Okay, awesome. So now let's dive in and talk a little bit about head form. Now there's two ways that we can break the head down. And someone said it earlier, someone said vertical and horizontal, and you were right on the money with that. When we break the head down, we can break the head down both vertically or horizontally. So it's kind of like, well, what's the difference? When do I want to break the head vertically? And when do I want to break the head down horizontally? So let's talk about that because in the shape that I'm going to show you, I'm going to be working with those two breakdowns. So let's take a look at that next slide, Kurt. All right, awesome. Thank you, Stacy. You're awesome too. All right, so right here on the screen, you see a diagram. And it almost reminds me like a bicycle wheel where you have the bolt in the middle, which would be the high point, And then you have like all the spokes and you see all those lines. Okay, this is what we, we refer to as breaking the head down vertically. Give me a V in the chat for vertical. This is what we refer to as working with the vertical breakdown of the head. So now the vertical breakdown, why it's so important. And as you can see here, I have a mannequin where it's, I already have it broken down. And after this, if you follow me on Instagram, I'll have pictures of all these mannequin heads so that you can save for, um, for yourself for, for reference. Okay, so here's our mannequin with vertical breakdown. Okay, now as you can see, here's our high point, and then we have all the lines that identify where the hair naturally lives. Now that's the key. For me, vertical breakdown is a roadmap that really shows me the major changes of direction that work in the head form. And if I follow vertical breakdown, and this is key and I'm going to get close. When I follow vertical breakdown, it will give me consistency and balance in all my haircuts. Write CB in the chat for consistency and balance. Vertical breakdown helps me identify those major changes that happen in the head form. So now if we take a look at our next slide, we'll talk about the next way that we can break the head form down. And this is what we call horizontal breakdown. Okay, give me an H in the chat for horizontal breakdown. Now horizontal breakdown identifies what we refer to as the five areas of the head form. So we have the nape, the back, the crown, the top, and the sides. And again, here we have our mannequin. So in here, you can see we have the nape, we have the back, we have the crown, we have the top, we have the sides. Within horizontal breakdown, this breaks down my areas and then vertical breakdown identifies the changes that happen. So both, both breakdowns work simultaneously together to give us consistency and balance in our haircut. So with that being said, and actually I think Kurt, we got one more slide on horizontal breakdown just to show another, another viewpoint of it. If you guys are, have your phones out and you're taking some pictures, but like I said, I'll have all these up on my um, Instagram after the show if you wanna take some pictures. Okay, great, awesome, Kurt, thank you for that. So just here's another version uh, or another viewpoint of the uh, horizontal breakdown. Again, the green area is the nape, the red area is the back and the yellow area is the crown. So now here's what I think about. This class is called Express Bob. What's this class called? Write it in the chat. We said this class is called Express Bob. And for me, it's about efficiency and time in the salon. So as you can see, I already have my mannequin and I'm actually gonna move these to the side a little. I already have my mannequin broken into, what breakdown do I have the mannequin in? We just talked about it. What breakdown do I have this mannequin in? Write it in the chat for me. What breakdown? Let me see. All right, good, yeah, horizontal breakdown. I see it coming in, great job. 
So I have this mannequin into horizontal breakdown because this is how we're going to work. We're going to work each area at a time. So we're going to work the nape, we're going to work the back, the, the crown, the top, and the sides. Now, here's the beauty of working with horizontal breakdown is I can still be mindful of the vertical breakdown, the major changes in the head form so that I can have consistency in my shape. Now, sometimes I might only cut one area of the head and it'll change the whole entire shape. So as we go through this haircut, I don't want you to think about it as a haircut. I want you to think about it as a haircutting exercise. Because every exercise that I show you in all these areas, you can just apply one of these areas to a haircut that you're already doing right now. So I want you to really think about this as more of a haircutting exercise rather than a full haircut. Because you can take a lot of these moving parts and in, intermix it to your, into what you're already doing. Oh my God, Tara, these classes are amazing. Thank you. Well, you are welcome and thank you for joining. And the Sam Via team, you know, Sam Via, mastermind of his craft, but there's a whole team, you know, that Sam has that makes him look good, LOL. I mean, you got Kurt, you got Dana. Of course, you guys love Andrew, you got Jesse. I mean, the whole entire Sam Via team, they're doing it right and they're bringing real education. And that's why I'm just so glad to be here today with all of you. All right, so we're going to get started. So now I'm in the nape area right nape for me in the chat right nape for me in the chat all right awesome so here's a couple things that i'm going to do i'm going to begin by prepping the hair so i've already shampooed this mannequin and i have the uh, the extreme bleach recovery if any of you have ever um used this or you're using this right now brand new product by redkin called bleach recovery it's a leave-in this is for all your high intense blondes, all your, your clients that have, you know, um, over porosity of hair from chemical services. This is like a miracle. To me, it's a, it's a must have treatment. I love to use this also as a cutting lotion. So I shampooed and conditioned her with the bleach recovery system. And now I have a little bit of the leave-in in there to use as a cutting lotion. The next thing I'm gonna use is my favorite cutting lotion is Redkin's One United 25. If you love 25, write 25 in the chat. The 25 Benefit is a really amazing, amazing uh, cutting lotion. So that's how I've prepped the mannequin. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn her this way so you guys have a better view and I'm gonna stand to the side. Now, if I was in the salon though, I would be parallel to my work to prevent over direction but I'm gonna come slightly to the side so you guys can see. So now here's the nape. Now the first thing I wanna do is I wanna identify that vertical breakdown. So check it out. I'm gonna take a section right down center back. From that, I'm gonna take another section halfway in between center back and the top of the ear. So right here where my left hand is, this is center back. Right here is the top of the ear. I'm going to split this right down the middle. So right in half is what identifies where the hair vertically lives. And I'm just going to give this a slight twist and keep this in natural fall. So again, I'm going to come over here and do the same thing. So now on the left side, I'm going to do the same thing. We have center back and we have top of the ear. I'm going to come through and split this right in half. And then that gives me two more sections. So how many sections do I have in the nape? Write it in the chat for me so I can see how many sections do I have in the nape? Let me see it in the chat so I know you guys are with me. How many sections have I just created in through the nape area? Awesome, Kara came in first with four. Trish is in second place with four. Who's coming in third place? Uh, Brandy with four. Uh, now you guys are all getting it, awesome. Uh, Evie, a four, great. So that created four sections in the nape. So these four sections is that vertical breakdown we talked about. This identifies where the hair naturally lives. All right, so here's how we're gonna get started. The first thing I'm gonna be working with today are my Sam Via Streamline Shears. These are a game changer. You have to get this in your arsenal. I love these shears. 
because they just fit so perfectly ergonomically with your wrist and they just work. And I love the, the tang on the side. So rather than taking your thumb, let me come this way and pushing it all the way through, just rest your thumb right on the tang so you can just only work that one blade. Remember, when we cut hair, you only wanna be using one blade at a time. All right, here we go. So now I'm gonna begin. It doesn't matter what section you begin in, whatever suits your style. I'm gonna begin right here in the center back. So I'm slightly left of center back. Okay, so now again, I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna move a little to the side so you can see. But if I was in the salon, I would be parallel to this section. Okay, Kurt, how are we looking in the frame there? Is everything coming across clear? I, I, I suggest that you bring it just a little bit center more frame for our audience. Just a little bit like more the, I'm gonna get like, How's that? That looks good, my friend. Okay, awesome. All right, so here we go. So now I'm gonna take this whole entire section at once, and this is where the express part of this haircut comes into play. We're condensing this whole entire section. So I want you to notice how I'm combing from underneath. I'm elevating the hair 90 degrees horizontal. So everything is coming straight out from where it lives. Now here's the beauty of when you condense cut the hair horizontally. And I know Sam's a big fan of cutting hair horizontally. I want you to notice, and I'm actually gonna clip this out of the way so you can really see. I want you to notice that when I elevate this hair, if you can see, the top of the section is being elevated straight at 90 degrees, but the bottom of the section is being slightly elevated up at 45 degrees. So here's what, let's go back to what I talked about with a straight line and a curved line. When you elevate at 90 degrees, you get a straight line. When you elevate above 90 at 45, you get a curved line. So I'm gonna get double bang for my buck by condensed cutting this. I'm gonna have a straight line on top and more of a softer curved line at the bottom. So check it out. My elevation, 90 degrees horizontal. My finger angle is horizontal. My finger position is horizontal. Now I'm gonna cut the silhouette first and the perimeter last. So I'm gonna drop my finger to see how short I want my layers to be. And then that's where I'm gonna cut. I'll recomb the hair, comb from underneath, insert the comb, finger angle, finger position at horizontal. And then I'm gonna come right in and cut horizontal. And I'm gonna release that. Now, before we even move forward, I just want to show you what this is created. So as you can see, let me give you a side view. As you can see here on the silhouette, you can see a slightly straight line and then moving into a curved line at the bottom for softness. Now, this would also look beautiful if you didn't cut the perimeter. Today, we're going to cut this shorter because we're doing a bob. But you're able to get two different types of lines with one section. Jess had a great question. Could you cut this with a razor to give it a softer feel? Absolutely, Jess. You could use any tool. You could use a razor. You could use a scissor. Well, I'm using a scissor. <laughs> you could use a razor. You could use a shear. You could use a clipper. You could use a texturizing shear. Your tool is whatever your preference is. All right, let's continue. I want to get this, uh, show you the rest of this. So now there's my first section. So now what's gonna happen is I'm gonna take a little piece of this guide, I'm gonna pick up my next section to the left. Now I want you to watch, my elevation is gonna be the same. My finger position is the same, but check it out. Now I can change my finger angle if I want a little bit more of an A-line towards the front. So I'm gonna do that just to see what, what we'll get. So here we go, elevation's 90, finger position's horizontal, Bang, I change my finger angle now to diagonal, come in and cut. So now as we release this, I'm gonna comb this into shape so we can see our overall end result. And again, there's our silhouette. You see that nice silhouette coming together. The perimeter I'm gonna cut last. And thank you, Angie, for that great question. So a question just came in from Angie. Why didn't I cut the perimeter first? For me, it's preference. I always love to cut my layers first, build my shape first, then 
add in my outline. I don't know about you, but so many times I would cut the perimeter, do all the layers, blow dry the hair, and then I got to go back and recut the perimeter. This is an express way of building your shape first, then placing in your perimeter. Also, sometimes I change my mind on how I want to cut the perimeter after the shape has been built. So it's my preference. Great question. I would challenge you to try it on a mannequin, see if you like it, and then do it on a real client. What I will tell you is that you're definitely going to see you're going to work faster. All right, here we go. The left side, we got two sections left. So now same thing. I'm going to pick up a guide from what, I, what I've already cut. We're going to elevate this hair at 90 degrees horizontal. Our finger positions horizontal. And I'm going to keep my finger angle horizontal. Remember, I only changed my finger angle on the two outsides to create an A-line. Now, you don't have to do that. I'm just doing that just for today. Jess Mack has a great question. Do you prefer to cut your perimeter dry or wet? Awesome question. I prefer to cut it like in the middle. So as you can see, I'm not re-wetting this hair. I'm letting it start to dry naturally. This way, when I go in to cut the perimeter, it already starts to dry a little bit. If I am going to re-wet the hair, I don't re-wet it with water. I re-wet it with the one, the, uh, one United 25. So again, it's a preference thing, but I don't like to do it where the hair is too wet because it bunches together, but I also like it to have a little bit of moisture in it. I hope that answers your question. All right, here we go. Last section. Elevation, 90 degrees. Finger positions horizontal. Now watch. Bang. I change my finger angle diagonal again so we can get a little bit of that A-line coming towards the front. River has a great question. What products do you like to use as a cutting lotion? Awesome, River. Yeah, we mentioned this earlier. I love working with the new bleach recovery uh, leave-in treatment. And then this is like in my back pocket at all times, One United. I also love the Redken Frizz, Dis uh, Frizz Dismiss Instant Deflate Spray. That's also, a, um, that's also a great cutting lotion. All right, so here we go. Uh, River said something about 25, yes. Yeah, so here we go, now check it out. Now I'm gonna, I want you to watch, because after we go through and cut this, you're gonna see how quick the rest of this haircut. I mean, this was four sections, and look at already the amount of movement that we have in the nape, so watch. I'm taking this and working it from right to left, left to right, and I'm doing that because I wanna start to comb my shape in place. So notice how I'm combing my shape in place. Now I want you to really take a look at this silhouette. Let me move this way so you can see. Can you see that nice line that we've built in the, oh, wrong hand. Can you see that? <laughs> oh, it's this way. Can you see that nice line that we've built in the uh, silhouette? If you can see it right, see it in the chat for me. Now all we need to do is go in and cut our perimeter. Bang, look at that. Look at that beautiful shape. So now I'm going to utilize that bottom line, and that's where we're going to go through and cut the perimeter. All right, so before we cut the perimeter, we got uh, Nisha. I hope that's how you see, say your name. Do you feel not keeping the moisture throughout the cut would make it inconsistent? I'm going to be honest with you. I feel that if you work with the hair really wet, then work with the hair really wet all the way through. If you work with the hair dry, then start off working with it dry. If you like more of an in-between, then I would keep it in between. Great question that you bring up. My belief on that is to keep consistency, it's a lot about your tension too when you work and also working with the head form. That's why I talked in the beginning a lot about horizontal and vertical breakdown. So I hope that answers your question. Great question. All right, before we cut the perimeter, I'm gonna answer one last question and then I'm gonna show you guys what we're gonna do. Is the client head tilted down at all? No way, Jose. Great question. You always want the client's head in upright position. The moment you tilt the client's head down, you've now moved the hair out of natural fall. Have you ever cut a bob, put her head down, you blow dry it, one side flicks out, and you tell her, oh, don't worry about it, just tuck it. <laughs> The reason that happened is because you tilted her head forward and you taken the hair out of natural fall. So you always want the head in upright position. Great question. 
All right, here we go. I'm gonna cut the perimeter using my Sam Vias Signature Texture Shears. Now, the reason I love these shears is you could use them with the teeth on the top or the teeth at the on, on, on the bottom. I'm gonna use them with the teeth on the, pop, on the top so our shape kicks under. Okay, so now check it out. Here we go, let me, let me hire her up. And I actually think Sam's got some great deals on his, uh, on his scissors this month. All right, here we go. So now I'm being mindful of the where, where the hair lives, like we talked about before. So now check it out. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna work with my comb, horizontal. I'm gonna keep the comb right where I wanna cut my perimeter. And now I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna work with the texture shears with the teeth on top just to remove the perimeter. And bang, look at how easy that removed the perimeter. So now watch as I comb this into place, look at that nice shape that we have. Now, when we come to the outsides, I'm gonna change my comb angle to diagonal, because remember, we wanted a little bit more A-line towards the front, so watch. Come in with your comb on a diagonal, texture shears, Come in and remove the perimeter. Now, again, this is optional. If you don't want your, your front to be longer, you don't have to do that. If you want it to be even more longer, you could slowly um, over direct the hair a little bit if you want. All right, so now we're gonna go through and we're gonna cut the, the right side. So here we go, keep the comb horizontal and remove that perimeter with the texturizing scissors. Now we're gonna go over to the corner. And again, we're gonna move this slightly diagonal to keep just a little bit more of that length towards the front. And that's it, we've cut the back, or I'm sorry, we've cut the nape in an express way in four sections. And if you look, would you agree that has a lot of movement? If you see a lot of movement happening in through that uh, nape, right movement for me, right movement. All right, so we got Natalie. What's the difference from the teeth on the top and the teeth on the bottom? Great question. So when you work with the teeth on the top, the hair will kind of kick under. If you work with the teeth on the bottom, the hair will kick out and have a little bit of texture. So it just depends on what kind of end result you want in your perimeter. And I'm gonna throw that back to Kurt or the team. Is there any other um, additives to the, the teeth? on Sam's uh, shears? You know, uh, thank you for that, that question, um, Lauren. The general answer is exactly what you just stated. You use the teeth, you, the perimeter up or down based on where you want the, the actual shape of the hair to, to, to finish. So thank you very much for that answer to that question, Natalie, and mentioned, Lauren nailed it. <laughs> awesome. All right, so now we're moving into the back area and guess what is gonna happen? The same thing. We're going to go through and break the head into how many sections? How many sections did we have in through the nape? Let me see who's the first one. How many sections did we have in through the nape? And for our very first, what was our first section in through the nape? How many sections did we have? Let me see it. Let me see it. Let me see it. Ah, oh, there we go. Trisha, four. You got it. So now we're going to have the same amount of sections in through the back. So now I'm gonna go salon speed. If you're ready for salon speed, write S, S in the chat for me, salon speed. Okay, good, so we've broken the back into those four areas again. Now I'm gonna lower this down, so, all right, we're good here. So now here we go. We're gonna elevate the hair the same exact way. So I'm taking the section, center back, right to the left of center back. Now check it out. I'm gonna use a little piece of the underneath of my nape as a visual guide. What I mean by that is I'm gonna disconnect the shape, so I'm not gonna connect it. I'm gonna slide out about two inches to leave the shape a little disconnected. Okay, here we go. Take the section, our elevation's the same, that horizontal 90. We're gonna come from underneath. Once I see my guide, I'm gonna slide out a little bit. And again, finger positions horizontal, finger angles horizontal, boom. Now we go to our next section. If you want to keep your finger angle or your finger angle uh, diagonal on this, like we did in the nape, you can absolutely do that. So here we go, elevations 90, 
I have, there's my guide right there from where we just left off. Now I'm gonna come and change my angle to diagonal. If I can't get it all at once, re-pick up the hair, angle it again, and cut. Now you'll see my shape is in there. Now all I gotta do is just clean up my perimeter. I got a little of the hair hanging in the perimeter. I can choose to do that again with the texturizing scissor, or I could now do that with a scissor, or I could do it with a razor, whatever your preference is. Okay, here we go. Elevations, 90 horizontal, finger position, and finger angle are horizontal. Notice I keep looking in the monitor. The reason I do that is to check my elevation. How many times you're in the salon, you start off one way and then you might drop your el elbow. When you drop your elbow, what happens is you're changing your elevation and that's gonna change the line in your silhouette. So always use your mirror in the salon as a guide so you can really pay attention to your elevation. See, look, I look, boom, there's my 90 degrees. Now I know I come in and cut. Again, change my finger angle diagonal and release. Okay, so now I'm gonna go through and clean up the perimeter on this, but I'm gonna choose to do this with my scissors. So I love to use the texturizing shears in the nape for softness, but now I'm through this next area, I'm gonna do the shears. So I'm just gonna comb it into natural fall and then slightly just come through here. And a lot of the times I don't even use my comb because I don't want a lot of tension. I just want it to be more in its natural fall. Just comb the hair in natural fall. I'm not even using my comb and I'm just loosening that up. And you can see all the movement in through that shape. Same thing on the other side. Comb the hair into natural fall and cut. Now this kind of goes back to that question that was coming up about the hair being wet or dry. You can see I've gone through and added a little bit more of the 120 or the 25, the um, one United 25, but I'm not adding any more water. So I'm just working with how the hair is starting to dry. All right, we're moving on to the crown. So we're gonna do the crown, the sides and the top, and that's it. This, this shape, it's, it's done. It's, it's a very, very easy, shape to be able to you know go through and just again create that express bob would i use the same technique um uh kurt how do you say that first name i think it's pronounced yuman but forgive me yuman if i've missed yuman. It. <laughs> all right awesome so yuman do you do the same thing with curly hair and fine hair great question Elevation is elevation, over direction is over direction, finger angle is finger angle, no matter what type of texture I'm working on. So if I'm doing this same technique on curly hair, I might choose to leave maybe the, the layers a little bit longer because then I know when the hair dries, it'll shrink up a little bit. Fine hair, this works awesome as well. So both of this, this technique that I'm sharing with you, I've used on wet and, or curly hair and, and fine hair. So. Thank you for that question. All right, here we go. We're in the crown, and now I've broken the crown into two sections. I, I split it right down the middle. I'm gonna use a little piece of the underneath as a guide, just like we have been. And now we're gonna take the right side, and we're gonna slightly over direct to center back. So my body's in center back. Again, our elevation is at that 90. There's my guide, watch it fall out. Look for it, look for it. Boom, there it falls out. I'm gonna slide a little beyond that, because again, we want this shape to be slightly disconnected. I'm gonna take the left side of the crown and repeat the process. So let me turn it around this way so you can see. Okay, so now here's the left side of the crown. Again, my body's in center back. Comb from underneath, make sure all the grains of the hair are in place. I have a little piece of my guide. Once my guide falls out, I come in and cut. Now my finger position in this case was horizontal. I didn't change it to diagonal. And the reason that I didn't change it to diagonal is because the over direction is already gonna give me some length towards the front. All right, we're gonna move on to the sides. If this has been helpful for you so far, write helpful in the chat. If you're learning, write um, helpful in the chat. Great question from Kathy. Do you do the same technique when she comes back for a trim? Kathy, I love that question. You know what I do? I analyze what area I need to recut. 
Sometimes I only need to recut one area. Maybe I just need to recut the nape. Maybe I need to recut the back. So I analyze what I need to recut and then I go in and recut that same area. Great question, thank you for that. Okay, good, I'm seeing a lot of helpfuls come through. Great job. Okay, so now I, this has started to dry a little bit, but guess what? I got my Sanvia dry um, clip in. And I love this because the rubber band here prevents from any kind of crimps in the hair. So that's a must have for me when, when, cutting, um, when cutting hair, when coloring hair, anything because it really allows for the hair not to get any kind of crinkle marks. All right, let me hire her up. Here we go. If you're ready for the sides, type in sides. Or just type in an S to keep it simple. All right, so now our elevation is gonna be the same. Who can tell me what our elevation's been through the whole entire haircut? Write it in the chat, what's our elevation been? Helpful from Trinidad, whoa, that's awesome. Okay, good, what's our elevation been? Write it in the chat for me. Our elevation's gonna be the same as it's been through the whole haircut. Let me see who I see it from first. 90 degrees coming in from the cold P first, awesome. So here we go, our elevation is 90 degrees horizontal. Finger positions horizontal. Now watch, my finger angle, I'm gonna change to diagonal, because again, I wanna leave a little bit more length towards the front. Now to cut the perimeter, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna comb the hair into natural fall. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna twist back once just to cut a little bit of that perimeter. So just by twisting back once, it leaves a little bit of an A-line towards the front in a very simple, simple way. Okay, let's repeat the same process on the opposite side. I'm actually gonna turn her this way so my arm is not in the way. No, actually this angle would be better. All right, here we go. I'm gonna lower her down just a little bit. Okay, so again, our elevation's 90 degrees, finger positions horizontal, finger angles diagonal, boom. Come through and cut. Release the hair, comb it into natural fall. And then once I have the hair, all I gotta do is come back and twist back once. Okay, and you can see that I'm twisting back horizontal. Thank you very much. Uh, that says Michael's Colors and Cuts. This is amazing. All right, so there we go. Now all we're left with is the top. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do the top. And this shape is complete. So I had saw some of you in the chat earlier were talking about, will this be recorded? Um, I, I'll let Kurt answer that, but what I will direct you to is Kurt's actually going to pull up a QR code, and if you guys have your phone with you, I want you to take out your phone and scan this QR code. So by scanning this QR code, this will take you directly to my YouTube page, Lauren Hagen, and I have a lot of what I'm sharing with you today on videos on my YouTube page. So scan that QR code. I'll also have that QR code up on my Instagram. If you guys don't have a camera with you right now, subscribe, follow my YouTube. I put a lot of education on there. I have a lot of videos on there. And what I'm sharing with you today, I have bits and pieces of this on my YouTube. So it's absolutely there. And then I'll let Kurt answer that as far as if this uh, sesh is recorded. All right, so now what I've done with the top is I've separated out the fringe area. So let me show you, I have the fringe area separated out. So the fringe area goes from slightly in front of the high point to the corner of the eye on both the left and the right. Okay, so now here's what I want you to think about. We're gonna give her a side fringe. The rule of thumb with a side fringe is always stand on the side that she's gonna wear it short. So short to long. I'm gonna take this whole entire fringe and elevate it over to this side. I'm gonna come in and just using a horizontal finger position, I'm gonna use my um, Sam Viet um, texture shears and we're gonna come in and I'm just gonna remove the perimeter. 
So just coming in and removing the perimeter. Now here's what I want you to see. When this fringe falls into natural fall, you can see how it goes from short to long in one simple step. So it just goes from short to long in one simple step. Okay, the last thing we have to do is the top. We have two sections. We have the right side of the top and the left side of the top. I'm gonna take this whole entire top and we're gonna elevate the hair and we're actually going to elevate it and wrap and lay it on top of the head. And we're gonna cut it on the opposite side of the head. When we elevate hair and wrap and lay on top of the head, we'll get a curved line that curves outward in our silhouette. So this will just really give us a very soft feeling through the top. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna use a little piece from the crown as my guide. Come through again, holding my fingers horizontal. And I'm going to cut with the sand via texture shears to remove the length. We're going to comb this into natural fall. And then all we would have to do is just clean up a little bit of the perimeter. But see, this is that where I'd wait for that when it's dry. You know, someone had asked earlier about the perimeter being dry. That I would wait for it to be dry because I might change my mind once I see it dry and decide, oh, I like the way that looks. I don't want to really cut that short. Same thing on the opposite side. Elevate the hair, bring it, wrap it, and lay it on top of the head using our Sam Via texture shears to remove the length. And there we go. Now you can see I still got some longer bits kind of hanging over the front, but I would wait for her to be dry and then go through and cut those little pieces. Or again, just kind of see, see where I'm at with the shape. And my friends, that is it. An express way to cut a bob utilizing the five areas of the head. Let's recap, we went in, we did the nape, we did the back, the crown, the top, and the sides. Our elevation throughout the whole entire haircut was 90 degrees horizontal. 90 degrees horizontal gives us a straight line in our silhouette, but because the underneath was elevated above at 45, it gives us that softness. Okay, then in through the top, all we did was elevate over to the opposite side to give us a little bit more of that curve. So now here I have a finished end result. And you can see here, I have one side straight and one side curly. So this is exactly what I just shared with you. I just went ahead and finished this side curly. Now I worked with my favorite Redken product, Triple Dry 15. Okay, so Triple Dry 15, right in through here and created this wave. And then over on through this side, we just kept it sleek. So you can see the angles, you can see the, uh, the shape taking place. And in through the side that we did straight, I finished it with the brand new Oil for All from Redken. I love the Oil from All from Redken. If you guys haven't tried it yet, it's a must have. Here's two things I wanna share with you. When I finished her look, I blow dry with my Sam Via Signature Blow Dryer, Signature Series Blow Dryer. This is a game changer for your blow dries. Why? Because of the concentrated nozzle, you get such a beautiful straight finish and it dries the hair super fast. So invest in your craft, get this. The second thing is when I curled her hair, I used the Sam Via Detachable Iron. What I love about this is if you detach it, it becomes a wand. So it's easy to just give some beautiful winding on the hair. And that's how I finished the side that was curly or the side that was wavy rather. All right, so triple dry 15. I see a lot of things coming in. Um, real quick, before we start to wrap a couple things up, we're right at about 12 o'clock. If you guys learned something in this time frame, I gave you almost four days worth of education in 45 minutes. So if you're feeling a little confused, if you're feeling like, whoa, oh my God, that's normal. Because I just gave you, like, cut and know why at the Redkin Exchange is a four-day program. I gave you a little bit of all those four days in 45 minutes. So if you're feeling like, oh my God, then you learned something. So that's awesome. So if you learn something, if you're feeling a little mind blown, if you're even feeling a little confused, if you're feeling like, whoa, I, I, I need to do this, write it in the chat. Let me see your comments. Awesome, awesome, mind blown. Right, learn so much, awesome. Yeah, a little confused, that's great. 
If you're feeling a little confused, that's only normal. This was a lot of information. So I'm gonna get, I'm gonna leave you guys on this note. I'm gonna give you guys, you know, I'm gonna give you a couple challenges. Number one, go to my YouTube, subscribe to my YouTube, watch more of this education. Continue to tune into all Sam's education. His education is mind blowing, no pun intended. My Instagram handle, I know the team put it up. It's Lauren underscore Hagen, follow me. I'll put up the diagrams that we use today on my Instagram so you can look at those diagrams. If you want to take a hands-on virtual class with me, head to redkinpro.com slash education and sign up for Cut and Know Why. We're doing a four-part Cut and Know Why. Kurt has it right here. The first date is October 18th. It's four phases. We're doing one in October, one in November, one in December, one in January. It's a three-hour hands-on virtual class, and we're going to walk you through everything I talked about today. Vertical breakdown, horizontal breakdown, all the different ways to elevate the hair. Everything that I shared with you in 45 minutes, you will be able to get it in four days, three hours at a pop. I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in today. I know some of you are like, I got to go. I got to get to the salon. You guys gave up your time and time is precious. So I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for tuning in today. I hope that I was able to share something with you in an express form that will help elevate your craft behind the chair. I want to give a big shout out to the Sam Via team. The Sam Via team is doing it right. They are changing the face of education. Sam, Kurt, Dana, the whole entire artistic team, huge thumbs up to them. I'm going to leave you on this note and say, I'm often quoted saying that auditioning for American Idol was one of the greatest experiences of my life. And albeit it was astronomical, but the journey along the way was priceless. When I tried out for American Idol, you know what they said to me? You look good. You sound good, but you're not what we're looking for. That made me the kind of woman that I am today because you know what I walked away learning from that experience? If I can achieve it, if I can believe it, if I can conceive it, I can believe it and I can achieve it. My message to you, my friends, is go for it. No matter what happens at the end of the day, believe in yourself, stay passionate and go for it. Can't wait to see you next time. Thank you so much. Kurt, I'm gonna throw it back to you. I wanna to say to you, Lauren, that you can tell by the chats how extraordinary this education was today. Uh, we are so grateful to have you come along and share your knowledge, your education, your enthusiasm, your passion. You you brought it all today. And Thanks, Kurt. we are grateful. I'm leaving Lauren's name up there just to be sure that all of you have the opportunity to get her handles down so that you can start following her. And I'm gonna, once we let Lauren go, I'm gonna show you another new routine we have, a new feature we have for you so that you can follow us and follow Lauren as we move forward, uh, continually bringing you our live education. So Lauren, I'm gonna let you go as well. Thank you so very much. You were just- Thanks, Kurt. Awesome. So great. It was an awesome experience. Hello. Have an awesome day. Thank you so much. Bye. Lauren Hagen, everyone. That is just a remarkable, bit of education, an hour of education. And she said 45 minutes, she packed in four days of education for us. So uh, I just want to re reiterate how powerful we felt that day was here at Sam Via. And before I let you go, she made some really important points about our products. And I do want to remind us all here, I'm just put this up to let you know that our, our monthly promotions are available. We're doing our very best to try to find the most affordable pricing for you as you go through this incredibly difficult time, but our products will be there available for you at the best prices we can make them available. But before I wanna let you go, I wanna remind you about something here. Coming up is the show must go on on Sunday. We talked about it earlier in the broadcast, but again, it's Sunday, four hours of education on Sunday, four hours of education on Monday. And we both have um, Fumi Aguchi who will be with us on Sunday as our guest artist with our art team, and then Hugo, Hugo Arias from Redken, another Redken powerhouse will be with us on Monday as well. So I look forward to having everybody that is available to enjoy your weekends and Monday with us again with another of our shows must go on. Now, before I let you go, I just wanna 
bring a, one more piece of attention to two things I really want to say. So bear with me for you. I think you'll like the last bit I'm about to share with you. September 17th, Sammy Fix, Sammy Fix with the Redkin styling sessions. That's at three o'clock. Just as a reminder, he's got his team with him through Redkin, another Redkin event of great education available for you. That's the 17th, Thursday, 3 p.m. East Coast time. Okay. Now, one last thing I want to point out to you. All right, take a look at what I'm about to show you. This is the live Samvia site. What I want to point out is that we've got a new feature for you to keep up with everything we're doing. This is live. So you're watching in the live example of our site. We've now added something special for you, and that's the events page. Now on the events page, you can get a heads up on everything we're doing every day. So in this case, you're seeing what's coming up on the weekend. But notice what else you have. Just scroll down, and you're seeing what we just had yesterday with uh, with uh, Lindsay. Now you just saw Lauren. You could, we just watched Lawrence. What's going to happen Thursday? It's all available for you, so you never have to feel like you're out of touch with what we have coming. Here's the following week. After that, which we'll be promoting next week, of course, but next week's classes, they'll be available to you on our events page. Just go to our events page to know what we have going. And then another part of this new feature we have is you just watch Lauren. So you go to the education side, scroll down to friends, click on the friends, and all of our brand partners and friends, and including our artists who appear on our shows every week, are available to you permanently now. So this will be an example of Lauren Hagen. Let's go see what Lauren's up to. There's her Instagram page. As she talked to you about and how to get to her Instagram page. Here it is. You can also uh, acquire it from us. So this is another example of how we're hoping that we can keep you informed on all the education that Sam V is doing. And this is the newest feature that we have available to you. We hope you love it. I think you're going to. We've got it available to you every day. Wow. All right. Transformation Tuesday is behind us. Like many people have asked, is this available going forward? Well, the answer, of course, is yes. It is going to be recorded and remains live or not live, but recorded on our YouTube channel and our Facebook channel. You can always go there for the permanent access to all our live education will be available to you when you have the schedule schedule to watch it again. Or if you didn't have a chance to watch it live, it's going to be available to you on our YouTube and Facebook channels. All right. I'm Kurt Gerheim. This is another Back, back day, if you're going to see Sammy, watch him Thursday over at Redkin, and then we'll see you on the weekend for the show must go on. For everybody here at Samvia, thank you so much for joining us today. Again, we'll see you over the weekend for the show must go on. See you then.